Hey guys, Rufus here. And today I want to talk a little bit about the bass gears that I use to record the bass covers that you see on this channel. And a little bit of tips and tricks here and there. Hope you enjoy. So this is a bass that I've been using for well over a year now. And it's also the only bass that I have with me right now. It's a Dingwall bass, uh, custom ordered through David Big Guy, who is the Dingwall bass dealer in Hong Kong. It's a Canadian Z3 model with a 37 inch scale at the bottom and 34 at the top. It's got a D-Rock rotary switch from the D-Rock model because I wanted the free pickup full on wiring option at the time. But the wiring option that I use most often nowadays is the middle and bridge pickup in parallel. It doesn't sound as big as the free pickup full on wiring option, but the sound it produces is more delicate in my opinion. The preamp is made by Douglas Electronics. It's a free band EQ with high mid, low mid, and bass. But I just use it in passive nowadays because the bass itself already sounds pretty good. The picks I use are Intune guitar picks. These are with my old logo on them, designed by Ghost from Motionless in White. Um, they are essentially the same as a 0.6mm standard pick that you can buy. The way I pick is actually quite similar to a slap in some sense because in a slap you try to hit the string against the fret but um, when I pick I try to hit the string in an angle so it slams against the fret as well. Bass tuning wise I tune anywhere from G sharp to C with the 130 gauge here. And for the songs that are in C-sharp to E standard tuning, I use the 105 here. And uh, for strings, I don't have a brand that I really stick with right now, but um, these are Payson stainless steel strings that I've started using recently. And um, the gauge are pretty much standard five string gauges. I don't have a pedal board this year because Douglas sent me this amp to use. Um, it's called an Alpha Omega 900. It has the distortion circuit of the Alpha Omega pedal in the form of a bass amp. On the front panel, it's very similar to the Alpha Omega Ultra pedal with the addition of a compressor, um, along with other buttons and switches like the gain knob, uh, master and volume knob for the cabinets, uh, mute switch, and uh, active and passive pad. If you've been following my settings on my Patreon, you notice that um, I tend to leave the drive shut all the way off um, and the blend knob is usually at around 2 to 3 o'clock. Um, despite the drive is at zero, it's a very different sound from what you hear without the distortion on. Um, so here is without and here is with. On the back panel specifically, I want to talk about the Post DI, which allows you to run the cabinet simulation mode through the Alpha Omega circuit to an impulse response. The button here is where you can engage the cabinet simulation, and this unit can store up to three impulse responses. So I'll just show you the difference here with and without the cabinet simulation. So to demonstrate what this amp does in the loop, um, here's the clean signal from the pre-DI, which is essentially without the amp. And last but not least, over here is the solid state logic audio interface, which is capturing both the clean signal from the pre DI and all the distortion cabinet simulation stuff from the post DI of the Alpha Omega 900. Um, this is USB powered, so it's very portable as well. Level setting wise, I like to set it marginally before Eclipse because that's the most efficient signal. But um, 
My level differs every time I record because my output into the interface varies depending on whether I'm using fingers or a pick or the wiring options that I use. So um, that's basically the rundown of the rig that you hear in my videos. I hope you like this video and the tones and I hope that some of the settings inspired you. If you want more information or have some questions, um, head over to the links in the description or comment below.